Hello, everyone joining us. Uh, we're going to give it just a couple of minutes before we kick it off here. Uh, and then we'll uh, get going. Let uh, people get an opportunity to jump on and join us today. All right, we're going to get uh, started again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We have a great presentation lined up for you uh, today. Uh, I am Brett Kozlowski. I'm a technical instructor for SNAP1. I'll be hosting today, and we are joined by uh, Alex Zalad Askis. I got that right. I'm getting better at it. Uh, and he is going to take us through the uh, episode home theater line. So without further ado, uh, Alex, I give the floor to you. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend a few minutes uh, learning about episode home theater. Uh, I'll jump right into who am I? Um, so my name is Alex Elioskis. I'm the director of product management um, over here at SNAP1. Uh, responsible specifically uh, for speakers. Um, I've been with SNAP1 uh, on kind of two tours of duty uh, 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 with a total time about six years. Uh, I have been involved in speaker product development uh, kind of since the early early 2000s. Um, so I've been around for a while. Um, I have worked on audio products for a number of uh, pretty uh, large brands. Uh, including uh, those that are listed on the screen there. Uh, and I'm currently responsible for uh, SNAP1 uh, speaker brands of, uh, of ep episode and triad. So we'll get into um, what we've launched, when, where, and, and to who. So uh, we've got, uh, we've had two waves of, of launches of episode home theater. One is our um, original home theater series. And, which was uh, done back in April, and our new home theater reference series, which was just done recently. The total lineup uh, consists of um, eight in-room speakers, like uh, you know, bookshelf, floor standing, uh, and home theater reference. Um, uh, sorry, and additionally four architectural speakers for a total of twelve. The product offering is um, divided into two performance classes. Uh, we have home theater series, which is really our high value, high performance uh, product, uh, bang for the buck. And then home theater reference reference is our um, is our kind of flagship product line. This is a no holds barred, um, you know, best of the best, best components, um, best crossovers, um, and best performance of any product that we built under the episode uh, product line uh, to date. These products were specifically designed for um, partners uh, that don't have don't necessarily have access to a dedicated home theater line. Um, you may just do one or two home theaters a year, um, uh, and you need access to something. This is a great great opportunity um, uh, to get into something that that's going to foot the bill for the majority of installations that you're running into when it comes to home theater, uh, or even just good two channel audio. Um, and of course, if you're doing you know, dozens of theaters a year, um, home theater reference and our other products are just a fantastic, uh, um, uh, fantastic to add to your portfolio. 
So we launched a home theater series back in April 2023, uh, which is a couple months ago. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on home theater, uh, but I will spend most of my time on home theater reference, uh, which launched uh, back in October, uh, middle of the month. So it's been in market for uh, about a month now, actually two now. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, we have, we're distributing this across all of our channels. So um, snapbaby.com, um, C4 portals. Um, not sure if we have any international partners on this call. Um, but they're available on either of those two portals as well uh, as at our uh, local locations. Um, they have not stocked yet, uh, but they will be stocking. Um, and then in our international markets of APAC, Asia Pacific, uh, EMEA, and uh, Canada, Latin America. So basically, they'll be available everywhere. Just note if you're a, a, a partner in EMEA um, that they won't be stocked there, but and they can be ordered similar to the fashion that you would order a triad speaker where you put in your order and it can it ships out of the U.S. Uh, so that's uh, uh, something for uh, all of our partners in all regions. So let's talk about the products that are launched on the top row are our episode home theater products. So first of all, we have our six inch in-room tower speaker. It's a, uh, a two-way um, large uh, tower, large footprint tower um, to be used as your uh, left or right channel or in a um, stereo listening environment. We got our in-room LCR. It's a six inch LCR that can be mounted horizontally or uh, vertically uh, on a bookshelf. Uh, we've got our in-room monitor speaker, uh, which is a great two channel listening uh, speaker for uh, smaller rooms. Um, it can also be used in, in place of the LCR or the tower uh, in a home theater setup. Um, and of course, uh, uh, an in-room Atmos module uh, that can be mounted on top of, of the in-room LCR or the in-room tower uh, or even wall mounted or ceiling mounted. The bracketing system for that allows for complete flexibility. The four inch satellite speaker is your little bookshelf. Uh, it's really geared towards, you know, smaller rooms if you want to put these beside your computer uh really really nice small nice sounding small footprint product and then there's the on wall lcr uh, the on wall lcr um, is optimized for 55 inch tvs uh, to fit on the left and right hand side uh, to do a nice two channel application uh, when maybe a uh, something under the tv is not possible uh, so that's uh that kind of completes out the the HT lineup. On the HT reference series, uh, we have our flagship uh, tower speaker. This is a four-way uh, four tower, um, incredible sonic performance. I will spend a little bit more time on that and going into detail on uh, a, a couple slides ahead. Uh, we have our flagship home theater refer reference in ceiling LCR. Um, again, it could be mounted horizontally or, or vertically. Um, depending on the application as a left, center, or right. Uh, we have a large footprint uh, in-wall LCR, which is in the center of the screen. Uh, so this is a kind of a, our, our bad boy in-wall LCR uh, that is, uh, is meant for uh, kind of architectural uh, uh, installation, uh, fantastic sounding. And then we have a smaller footprint, medium size in-wall LCR, uh, which you can see beside it. Uh, followed by a in-ceiling LCR. Uh, in-ceiling LCR, it's lagging a little behind on our schedule, so it'll be available in Q1, uh, but that'll be a great option when you cannot have your front stage um, uh, down at floor level uh, and you have to put them up in the ceiling. Um, that's going to be a perfect option. And then our very versatile in-wall surround. Um, it's, uh, it's, not just a, it's not just an in-wall surround and I will expand upon its uh, kind of benefits and applications in slides coming up. Let's talk briefly about what we're, what's, what's going away while we launch the new HT and HT reference. So our current 300, 500, 700, 900, and 950 series is currently in a, um, a phase out process. Um, some of these are on sale right now, um, and they are available while supplies last. We will not be replenishing these, uh, but these are what are going to be going away and eventually be replaced by those 12 HT and HT reference products. 
So let me talk a little bit about our um, loudspeaker uh, design philosophy. Uh, so many, many years back, 15 years ago, uh, when Snap first first started, you know, most of the products were were sourced overseas, and you know the the episode name were were put on it. So that was 15 years ago. We don't do any of that anymore. Every one of our products is um, uh, defined in house um, internally here, and is purpose built for the CI market. Um, and all of our products follow a very very similar. Uh, design philosophy. Uh, so there's a lot of consistency between uh, what you're going to get when you uh, purchase an episode speaker. So our acoustical design philosophy is based on um, many, many years of, of research. Um, kind of the roots of them are within uh, the NRC, the National Research Council, uh, where Floyd Toole um, kind of headed up a study um, uh, because at the time there was no way to quantify what good sound was. So Floyd took it upon himself and worked with the National Research Council who had a massive anechoic chamber and listening room in Ottawa, Canada um, to quantify via measurement what is it or if there are things that are consistent between different loudspeakers that make one sound good versus not. And he did come up with quantifiable uh, measurements that has basically become the recipe for good speaker design. Uh, a lot of Canadian speaker manufacturers um, follow this philosophy very closely uh, because the NRC was in, in Ottawa. So brands like Paradigm and PSB, uh, Totem, um, they all follow the NRC principles. So do we. Um, but we've kind of adapted to, um, you know, fast, fast forward 25, 30, year, 30 years later, there's a lot more tools in our tool belt that we have available to further uh, build on that recipe. So really, um, we're trying to develop loudspeakers, which are musically transparent. So when you close your eyes, they disappear into the room. They're spacious. They preserve the natural timber of the musical instruments. Um, we develop loudspeakers that are capable of recreating the sound stage and image with precise detail and placement accuracy. Um, we want to faithfully reproduce dynamic contrast while maintaining the pace and the rhythm of the music. And of course, uh, be capable of instantaneously responding to musical transients. So music is, and, and um, loudspeaker design is a, is, it creates a very emotional response and you can actually take, and I've seen this done before, um, play a video up on the screen and then play three very, very different background musical tracks. And they can invoke a very different emotional response. So audio is very, very emotional, provides um, emotion um, to your viewing experience. And really what we're trying to do is to maximize that kind of emotionally engaging listening experience. So we do that with uh, based on science. So we we believe that sound is a science and it's less of an art. The art is the kind of the industrial design and the look of the product. But there is a series of measurements and formulas that if you follow, you will always build a great loudspeaker. And again, these are based on some of the original research back from the NRC that Floyd Toole led uh, many decades ago. Our interpretation of the NRC, um, which in many ways the NRC also, you know, our sound based on science plus the NRC, uh, if you look at the new RP22 um, immersive audio standard that has just been released for CDF, um, all of these things perfectly apply to each other so uh, and are based upon each other. So we are designing our loudspeakers to be um, uh, kind of consistent with uh, those expectations. So first of all, we have linear uh, and smooth octave to octave direct radial amplitude response, sorry, axial 
uh, ampl amplitude response combined with extended bandwidth. So what does that do? What does that mean? It really means accurate reproduction of the timber of musical instruments. It's the preservation of kind of auditory images. When you close your eyes, the ability to place things on the soundstage, the drummer is in the top left, the singer is in the middle, the guitar player is to the far left or far right. Um, these are all things that we want to be able to reproduce. Um, broad and uniform radiated directivity of sound waves throughout the frequency bandwidth. So this really recreates the spatial characteristics of the performance space. Um, spatially kind of like depth and width of soundstage, height of soundstage. Um, third thing is reduction of distortions and damping resonances. So um, this doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, the cone distortion, but that is one type of distortion. We're talking about how you build the cabinet uh, of the loudspeaker to eliminate uh, distortions, eliminate vibrations, eliminate resonances, which re results in kind of lost SPL and poor sound quality. And of course, Im improved impulse response. This is transient response. It's the ability of the speaker to very quickly react to changes in music. The better speakers that out there that are out there will do that very effectively um, and, and sound very dynamic. So this is our kind of design philosophy. Again, it all backs back to the uh, NRC uh, research done decades ago. Um, and we build this into all of our current loudspeakers uh, for, for episode. Let me jump into some of the features and benefits. I'm going to highlight kind of what's consistent with all of our products, uh, which again, um, starts with our episode HT series. Just talked about sound based on science. Um, all of our cabinets are built out of um, resonance free MDF. So very, very thick um, baffles, one inch on the minimum and up to an inch and a half on certain models, uh, which uh, reduces the amount of energy lost through that vibration I talked about on the last page. A lot of other speakers out there are particle board and they do a very poor job of, uh, of, of kind of reducing vibration. All of our cones are carbon fiber. Um, they're high, high strength. They're very responsive um, and produce better bass and cool better um, because they have a one and a quarter inch voice coil. Think of the voice coil as the piston in an engine. Uh, the larger the displacement, or in the case of a loudspeaker, the larger the voice coil, um, the, the greater the ability to um, uh, uh, kind of create uh, power in this case, the power results in um, a better bass response um, and better cooling ability because you have a, a larger voice coil winding, uh, which will make the uh, speaker handle more power. Uh, a one inch aluminum dome tweeters. Um, they have a kind of a nice textile suspension. They're chambered. Uh, they have a copper shorting ring, which results in an incredibly smooth and detailed sound. All of our transducers are designed by us. Uh, we don't buy anything off the shelf. Uh, they're, they're perfectly um, um, optimized for the system. Um, in the case of like looking at all of our speakers in the HT series and the six inch drive six inch drivers that are in them, there are actually six different drivers that are used amongst the different products. And this is because those drivers are optimized for the particular application that they're used in. A lot of brands will just choose one six inch driver and they'll use it across all their models. These are specifically optimized for the application. All the products have local grills uh, with the exception of the uh, one of the HT reference models, but uh, these are paintable um, if you so wish to do. Also great protection for the speaker and they look good. Uh, we have removable port plugs on most of the products, uh, the in-room products. Um, so, when you mount a loudspeaker into a cabinet, it has a very, it, there's a lot of acoustical stuff that's going on around and behind the speaker. Um, and it changes the way that you hear sound. So we include port plugs on all of the products that are in room so that you're able to, when mounting it inside a cabinet, reduce that kind of muddiness that you hear 
the bloated sound that you hear with typical loudspeakers. If you mount them out on the you know out in the open on out on a shelf, uh, you don't need to use them, but uh, we recommend that you use those port plugs when they're mounted in a cabinet. Uh, we have biamping and bi wiring capability, so not a lot of people buy amp. Bi amp basically means you you send one uh, amplifier channel to like the uh, the the higher end frequencies on the speaker, and then one channel to the lower end frequencies. That's really not done a lot. Bi wiring is something that's far more common. Um, you know, a lot of integrators will run a four you know fourteen four or four uh, four conductor home run when they're doing speaker installs. You know, some of it's for redu redundancy, uh, just in case something happens, somebody pops a screw, whether putting the drywall up, um, and one of the, you know, one of the conductors is shorted, you've always got that kind of backup when you do a, a four conductor home run. Uh, it's it's very, very beneficial to try by wiring um, it, if you've run that 14.4 or 16.4, or whatever it is. Um, and what by wiring means is you, you know, you wire, your two positives and two negatives um, at the amplifier like you normally would. Um, but at the speaker, you remove the shorting bars, which you can see that little brass bar that connects the top two terminals to the bottom two terminals. Uh, and you split off uh, your positive and negative to the top and the other positive and negative to the bottom. And what that does is it has a very subtle improvement in uh, sound quality because you're isolating the, the, the way that the, uh, signal is going through the crossover. Um, so I highly recommend that if you're not doing by wiring that you do it if you're running a, a four conductor home run. Um, by amping is something that's a little bit more complex because you need to dial in amplifier channel one and channel two so that they're absolutely identical. So by wiring is a great option. Um, all of the HT models, uh, with the exception of, of course, the in walls, uh, architectural models, they're all available in high gloss piano black, high gloss piano white and real uh, walnut wood veneer. Uh, so three options in that wood uh, wood veneer. Um, the walnut is actually uh, meant to uh, uh, blend with the episode mega series of, of subwoofers. Hey, Alex, Moving on. I have a uh, quick question here. Are the grills removable? Yes, they are. They're removable and magnetic. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so jumping into HT reference. So this is kind of where we start talking a little bit more tech. Um, so episode HT reference adds architectural SKUs. So um, we've got four architectural models within HT reference in addition to two in-room cabinet models. The coherent source module is really the heart of HT reference. Um, it makes the speaker either a three-way or a four-way. Uh, combines an aluminum dome mid-range and aluminum dome tweeter for great sonic performance. Not any, there's no one speaker that can reproduce the entire frequency range well. Um, a two-way speaker will kind of break the signal down into two parts, uh, which makes each driver be able to operate more efficiently. A three-way, will do that even further and a four-way will do that even further beyond that. Um, the challenge as you go from a two-way crossover to a three-way uh, to a four-way is it can get very complex. And if not done right, it actually can have a, a detrimental effect on the, the sound quality then improving it. Talking about that crossover, what's special about HT reference is we are using um, second order either two-way, three-way, or four-way Linkwitz Riley filters. And, and, and what's unique about them is they're using a Zobel impedance matching circuit inside. And I'll talk about that um, um, in a little more, more detail visually uh, and what that does uh, in the slides to follow. The architectural models all have tonal balance controls. So depending on where you're mounting them in the room and whether they're near a boundary, um, you can adjust and compensate for different um, acoustical responses. The spatial sound control switches, those are available on the in-wall surround. Really, really cool. I will, uh, I'll jump into detail on what that does, 
um, in 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 more detail in the next couple of slides, uh, and then of course all the architectural models have a removable back. The back can be removed when used in a larger stud bay, where you want to take in, uh, take into consideration the larger volume available to you um, to get better uh, base response. Uh, you you can remove the back of the models and uh, and use the uh, the stud bay or or the joist bay um, to improve your performance. Now I do have uh, with me uh, one of our architectural in wall medium models, and I just want to lift it up here, and hopefully you can see it, um, just to see kind of the crossover network, um, the construction. Uh, inside uh, the speaker, uh, and this is all um, uh, the crossover with the Zobel impedance matching. So very, very impressive and very good sound quality. So what is Zobel impedance matching? So a typical loudspeaker, I think you've probably heard this before, um, in, impedance varies by frequency. This is not a frequency response curve, right? This is this is a impedance curve. Uh, so this is measuring the kind of load, the resistive load on the amplifier over fr uh, frequency range. So the red line is really a typical loudspeaker that has a normal crossover. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, these they still sound great, uh, but you can see that the impedance varies quite um, substantially on a traditional crossover network. The blue line is the Zobel impedance matching uh, circuit. So you can see that it's far more linear. Um, there's fewer peaks and dips. And what this does is it compensates for the, the speaker's reactive impedances and makes the total system impedance much flatter. This makes it more resistive and less reactive and complex on the amplifier. So the result is the amplifier voltage and current components are nearly in phase, which improves overall dynamic range, imaging, sound stage stability, and actually makes it easier for the amplifier to drive. So these Zobel impedance matching circuits are not typically used because they're quite expensive to implement. And in our uh, four-way flagship product, um, uh, it really, really makes it the best loudspeaker that we've ever developed uh, within the episode brand. So I'll talk about those unique applications. So we've got our HT. I'm going to talk about kind of two unique products within the line that I think are worth additional discussion. Uh, the HT reference in-room tower speaker. Um, so this is our flagship four-way the four-way speaker. It's our first four-way speaker that we've designed, and it's the best sounding speaker acoustically ever at episode. You can take a look on the right-hand side. Um, these are the crossovers during development when we were, we were doing the measuring measurements and testing. They're just bolted to the back of a cabinet, um, but that's how complex the crossover network uh, is for this uh, four-way uh, tower speaker. Going back to, you know, Floyd Tool and his recommendations on um, uh, a measurement-based approach for designing loudspeakers, this would measure textbook, textbook perfect versus what Floyd Tool said would make a great loudspeaker. These are 91 dB efficient. They handle 250 watts RMS. These are no, no BS specs uh, and have the ability to achieve a max SPL of 115 dB at one meter. You do not need a subwoofer with these if you're using these as a kind of a two-channel listening environment. The extension on these is incredible. Um, I would highly recommend giving these a try because uh, you will not be disappointed. I have no problem with taking these and putting them up against speakers that are three times the price. The HT reference in-wall surround is also another new application, a unique application with the lineup. It's unique because it can be a monopole or a direct rating speaker, a dipole or a bipole, depending on how 
you configure the switches. It does mount in a, a standard two by four stud bay, or you can mount it in the ceiling, put it in a monopole or direct radiating mode, and now you have a, a high performance Atmos height channel. And I'll refer to the spatial sound controls in a couple pages on how that all works. Hey, I'm looking at- got one yep. more question in here yep. uh, before you move on. So it says those capacitors look like they may be ceramic. Are they or are they mylar? That's a really good question. Uh, I would have to look at the crossover schematic. I mean, I do have them here. Let me ask my acoustical guy. Yep. Thank you. All right. Looking um, just briefly at specs and looking specifically at HT reference. First thing you'll notice is the impedance. Um, these are very typical with high-end um, uh, high-end loudspeakers that the impedance is lower than 6 ohm. So in the case of the tower, it's 5 ohm. You do not want to drive these with a low-end AVR. You will be extremely disappointed if you're putting this on a $299 AVR. It will not do, do these products any justice. It has to be a high current, high power, high end AVR, or even better, going with separates. Um, do do not drive these with a with a low end AVR. Um, power handling. I mean, the 250 watts RMS on the on the tower, uh, 200 watts on the in room LCR. Uh, high power handling, um, and then. You know, all models there having the one and a quarter inch voice coil with the exception of the four inch in ceiling LCR, um, giving you that great base performance, power handling and um, efficiency. Okay, looking a little bit at our installation, uh, some of the things uh, that, that need to be considered for installation. I mentioned one of them just before um, that you should not be putting this on a low end AVR. It's fine for HT but HT reference highly recommend you're doing high end or separates. So tonal balance controls, you know, this is your base mid range and tweeter controls. Um, we've implemented them a little bit differently. Um, uh, obviously you can still use the base cutter boost uh, for, you know, typical in wall installations, uh, but we've designed it uh, to be adjustable when you use the uh, when you have the back on versus the back off. So there's a different uh, switch setting for each. Uh, mid range and tweeter they operate um, they operate pretty similarly to uh, a, a, a normal uh, mid range or, or tweeter adjustment switch. Um, there's there's no real rules on which setting to use here. Uh, it, it it really depends on the room. Uh, how how close you're located to the boundary, the listening area, um, and really it's about adjusting, listening, and picking the one that's right for the application. Spatial sound controls, these are on the in-wall surround. So there is an on-off switch. If you have the switch in the off position, it turns off those two ambient drivers that are on the left and the right-hand side of the tweeter. It becomes a direct radiating monopole speaker, uh, which can be used in wall or in ceiling as an Atmos height channel. You can then turn on the switch. And by turning the switch on, you can then select whether it is a bipole or a dipole. I know that bipole is pretty much, uh, has been for many, many years, the uh, de facto kind of Dolby recommendation uh, four surrounds. Um, we still include a bipole because in a, in situations where the seating area is very, very close to their surround speaker, um, a, a dipole changes the uh, dispersion pattern so that runs, uh, it lobes more along the wall than when it's in a bipole situation where it lobes kind of more into the seating area. Uh, so we include both um, uh, for, uh, depending on if you have uh, something that's in a close proximity um, to your listening position or not. And then there's a, a third switch, which is a min 
a mid and a max. And that really, it's just think of it as kind of the volume control for those ambient drivers. So uh, if the surround speaker is located very close to you, um, but still, you know, in bipole mode, uh, you could, you know, turn that down to a minimum setting. But if it's one of your front uh, front surround channels, it's further away, um, you can actually turn it to a mid or a max um, and do the compensation that would, you know, typically your AVR would do. Uh, but this gives you more of an effect into the room. So the spatial sound controls uh, make this a very versatile speaker um, and, and gives you a lot of different applications that you can use it in. Talking briefly about the uh, coherent source module orientation, the uh, the coherent source module is adjustable, rotatable. Uh, so we highly recommend that when it's in a vertical position, like on the left or the right, uh, that the tweeter is facing up. And then when it's in a horizontal orientation, you undo the screws, you rotate it so the tweeter is up. Um, and we also highly recommend that um, for best sound quality and for best kind of uh, for for when when sound sweeps across the front stage uh, in a movie that the coherent so source module is on the so uh, same horizontal plane uh, when possible. Uh, lastly, we got our our, our new our pre-construction brackets. Uh, something that's unique about these that's worthwhile noting, you know, um, other than you know it's 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 your typical powder coated steel. Um, it's got the screw in arms. You can cut the arms for uh, extended, uh, you know, widths of if you had a stud bay that's really wide or a ceiling joist that's uh, really wide, uh, you can cut these and get more extension left to right, top top to bottom. They has uh, they they all include the drywall lip, which insert ensures the drywaller gets the roto zip tool, cuts it out, and uh, doesn't just cover it up like uh, like some pre construction brackets out there. Um, and the, the in-wall LCRs, uh, especially the L size, the large one, is it's very long. And we include these support brackets. You can see that kind of is that third bracket uh, in the picture. And the support brackets keep and hold the bracket in shape before the drywall or cuts the drywall. You can imagine it, it's a pretty, pretty large rectangle. And without that, there is a risk of, of something getting a little wonky, not, not square in the corners. And next thing you know, you got problems with getting the speaker uh, into the wall. Um, this, this ensures that the bracket stays square uh, and then you'll remove this uh, before your final um, install of the speaker. So that kind of wraps up the presentation. Um, I highly recommend that you give these a, a try. Uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Our flagship tower uh, is definitely a reference um, that, uh, I'll say it again, I have no problem putting it up against anything three times the price. Thank you for your time. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to shoot away. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, very informative. Uh, yeah, we'll give a couple of moments and uh, see if any of you have any uh, questions. Will you be doing demonstrations and or comparisons at any of the branches? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think, you know, came up uh, came up earlier. Uh, I think, yes, we need to. Uh, I think our, our partner stores, our local stores are a great place for us to be able to to demonstrate these. And I will work on. Uh, trying to figure out a way to to make that happen. Excellent. Uh, will you be offering a dealer dealer trial program? So I'm not on the sales side, but I do believe there is there is some sort of demo program. I don't want to comment too much on this because I don't not one hundred percent certain. Um, but we can we can find out and uh, get a definitive answer on that. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Anyone else have any questions for Alex? Yeah, and the only other outstanding one that we still have, Alex, is uh, concerning the capacitors. Um, 
but if you want to give me the answer, I would yep. uh, be happy to uh, respond and yeah, make I'll, sure he gets his answer. Yeah, I'll try to get that as soon as possible. I got him here on, on text here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, doesn't look like we have any more questions. So uh, I want to, A, thank Alex. Uh, again, very informative, great info. Uh, looking forward to hearing them myself. I want to thank all of you that attended and taking time out of your day uh, to uh, check out the new uh, episode of uh, Home Theater line. So again, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.